Hey guys, welcome back to what is the fourth video in the Does Size Matter video. Today we're tackling the little guys, the guys that are always the smallest on the field, the scrum halves. I must say this was one of the most difficult ones I have done so far. That's why it took me a bit longer to post this one. Uh, it was a bit difficult to analyze the stats and so on because the scrum halves are a lot of times overlooked in the stats uh, when it comes to scoring tries and so on. Uh, for the team overall and how they play like their passing game their kicking game uh, their running game is extremely dependent on a team's game plan as always i set up this massive list that is next to me uh, and it took me quite a while as you can see on the list all the green players are the bigger guys the red players are the smaller guys uh, that's to, according to the average scrum half that I could find in Super Rugby. From this list, I could see the smallest scrum half and also the smallest Super Rugby player is Sanela Nohamba from the Sharks. The Sharks now own the smallest and the biggest player in Super Rugby. They also have Leroux Roots. I compared the two sizes just for fun, actually. I just wanted to see. Roots weighs twice as much as Nohamba. I was quite shocked to see how many of the scrum halves are quite heavy in Super Rugby. Guys like McDermott, uh, Lawrence from the Rebels, and then the heaviest guy in Super Rugby is Ruru from the Blues. The tallest Super Rugby scrum half is Janssen van Vieren. I haven't seen him play much yet. He's still a developing guy with the Bulls, but he is still pretty tall for a scrum half. Comparing the conferences, the heaviest conference is basically the New Zealand conference and the South African conference being the lightest one. All three conferences though have basically the same height. Looking closer at the teams, the South African conference have average size scrum halves except for the Stormers who have pretty small scrum halves. Then the New Zealand conference, all of them are basically above average and then the Australian conference is average to below mostly. Now let's get into the interesting stuff. How teams compare and how they perform depending on the size of their scrum half. We'll get into the individual scrum halves a little bit later and how they perform in this video but for now we'll just compare the team's performances uh, please note all the stats are for the whole team so how many tries the whole team scores and so on it's just for me to co basically correlate the size of the scrum half to the statistics of a team the teams that score the most points tend to have an average size scrum half. Uh, less points are the smaller scrum halves and the big scrum halves tend to be in the middle. That does tell you something if you do look at that just like that. The same story is told when you look at the points on average, so the points every game they scored. The Brumbies, they basically score the most and then the Sunwolves, they score the least. Going into the tries a team scores, you can clearly see the same. The teams with the average and the heavy scrum halves score more tries, while the smaller and lighter score less. Due to a strategic plan or what is going on there, it's difficult to tell, but that's just the statistics that I can analyze just like that. The tries on average, though, the teams with the bigger scrum halves score more tries. That's what statistics tells me. Okay, the other things we can look at is how the, the different type of scrum halves play. You get kicking style scrum halves, you get passing style scrum halves, you get running style scrum halves. So first, let's look at kicking styles. So the teams that get the most kicking meters from different sized scrum halves. So kicking meters on average. From the statistics it looks like the average sized scrum half is higher to do the kicking for the side. Whose team does more running though? It's of course gonna be the bigger scrum halves. The little ones I don't know where they really rank up. Uh, they are a little bit lower down on that rankings. Looking at the statistics so far it's not a good sign for the short scrum halves. Okay, but that's enough for the teams. Let's look a bit closer at the individuals. Like who scores the most tries, who runs the most, who passes the most, who kicks the most, and who tackles the best. Two of the top try scorers of the scrum halves are small guys. None of them are considered tall, but the top try scorer is McDermott, who is a heavy 
uh, scrum half he is 92 kilograms that's pretty heavy for a scrum half in any case the top passes any scrum halves forte all the big and average scrum halves pass the most only Yankees and Aaron Smith is on this list for smaller scrum halves leading the passing stats on average it is the heavy and the tall guys again uh, with a few average and short guys in between some of the scrum halves are runners though. How do their sizes compare to each other? In total, a complete mixed bag with McDermott present again and Weber obviously there. No real average guys are on this list. The guys that run on average the most is the small guys with Weber obviously leading the stats. But again, it is a mixed bag. Last type of scrum half you get is the kicking style scrum half. Smith is clearly at the top with 41 kicks if I remember it correctly at the top with the Highlanders strategy and game plan they do employ you will see that happening same with the Sharks having two guys on this list both Schroeder and Nohamba being on the list for guys kicking a lot but it is working this game plan for the Sharks they are second overall for most points scored in the season so maybe the kicking game is working for them we did see it happening for the Springboks at the World Cup the last point is always up for debate and that is small guys can't tackle Fuff and Colby will probably have something to say about that mostly the big guys are the bigger tacklers or the big scrum offs are the bigger tacklers but guys like Page and Yankees do make the list. Uh, but on average, we also see more average and big guys on the list again. So what have we learned with this analysis of the scrum half sizes? It is probably better to have a bigger scrum half or an average scrum half at least when you look at the stats, when you compare it like that. But there are smaller guys that do put up their hands. Guys like Aaron Smith. Weber and Yankees all three international quality players that do just play outplay their bigger counterparts every week guys it is interesting looking at all of this stuff next week it is the fly house that's probably going to take me even longer analyzing goal kicks as well now drop calls all that type of stuff as well but it is then the fly halves left, the centers, and then the outside backs. And then we're done with the Does a Size Matter series. Leave me a comment down below if you have any, uh, any comments about the scrum half sizes. What do you think about this? That average and bigger size scrum halves do perform a little bit better. Or do you have something to say about maybe I analyzed something a little bit wrong here. Guys, enjoy your week. I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.